But this actually sets a real challenge for the new Albanese government, one that I don't think it wants. And I'm worried. I'm worried because one lesson from Saturday's election is that the Morrison government lost votes by taking a tough line on China and human rights. Australia has got 1.2 million Australians of Chinese descent and seats with high numbers of ethnic Chinese swung twice as much to Labor as other seats. It cost the Liberals Chisholm, for instance. And the reason being given is that a lot of Chinese didn't like the hard line the Morrison government was taking. And Labor will not want to lose those seats by doing the same. Joining me is Michael Danby, a former Labor MP who, like Kimberly Kitching, has campaigned for Tibet, for Taiwan and also for Muslim Uyghurs. Michael Danby, thank you so much for your time. The election result in those uh, heavily Chinese seats we have, like, like Chisholm, for instance, um, and Ben Long and, and other seats like that, do they scare you? Well, first of all, Andrew, congratulations for you focusing on this thing. It's a really important humanitarian issue, uh, tr transcendently important all around the world. It does worry me a bit, but um, not as much as you'd expect. I, I think um, some of the rhetoric of the government may have scared some of the uh, ethnic Chinese communities, but there's no evidence that the um, Chinese government directed people to uh, vote this way via WeChat or... or, or uh, uh, other medium. Interestingly, um, some of the solutions to these kinds of problems come from within uh, the Chinese Australian community. And uh, I just heard uh, today from the China experts that uh, Kimberly Kitchen convened of the great translation uh, service that um, is translating some of this uh, more uh, in insightful uh, pro uh, Beijing uh, rhetoric on WeChat. So Let's hope that the Chinese Australian community can solve some of these problems themselves. Um, I, I think we all have to be careful, Andrew. Um, I don't use the word Chinese or China when I'm criticising the government of the PRC. I use either PRC or Beijing. And uh, that's my strong suggestion to uh, Peter Dutton that um, in legitimate criticisms of China, that that's how he frames it. So it's clear that we're talking about the government not um, uh, local people. Well, I, I tend to prefer uh, communist China or the uh, communist dictatorship or the Chinese dictatorship to make clear we are talking about an oppressive government that, imp that imprisons many of its own people. Agreed. But you see, why I'm worried, Michael, and, and, and if you've been worried about this in the past, Labor has changed in the past some of its policies to please the growing Muslim vote, and particularly policies on Israel. And that makes me wonder if, if people like Bob Carr in Labor take the same issue, the same approach to China, and he's very pro-Beijing, as you know, or he has been, I can see Labor doing the same again for what it perceives to be Chinese voters. Well, so far, so good. I, I, I don't see Bob Carr as having much influence on um, um, Albo um, in, in Japan or in Jim Chalmers telling... Uh, the Chinese government to take those tariffs or punishments off Australia over uh, foreign trade. So, look, I agree with you. Um, we have to uh, be very careful and not weak on this issue. So I'm not suggesting that uh, Peter Dutton be weak on these things, but just let's frame it so, like you do, on the Chinese communists so that uh, uh, they're really in the gun. I, I have confidence that... Um, uh, Australia will be able to, s to steer a middle path with this, but we, we cannot give in on any of those 14 demands of Australia that the Chinese government uh, has made of us. And we can't be like the I realist wanna, like Dr Kissinger or said. Kevin Rudd and say that... No. I want to echo, though, something you just said, Michael. Uh, you're right. Uh, some of the rhetoric lately has been very good. Anthony Albanese saying, look, the problem between Australia and China is not of Australia's making, it's China. Right? They want relationships uh, with us. They've got to do something uh, and drop the trade uh, bans on us. And, and 100%. But one thing, one thing. The last time that uh, former, our former Liberal Foreign Affairs Minister talked to the US Secretary of State and Anthony Blinken, the readout of their meeting said that they had discussed the problem of China. But now our new Labor Foreign Affairs Minister, Penny Wong, has met Blinken this time, with Penny Wong in charge, their readout does not mention China by name at all. Not 
once. Does that concern you? Is this a sign of, you know, look, maybe we're going to soften I think the you, rhetoric, I think you mean Taiwan. Right in China's face. Andrew, I've seen the same chrism, but I think you mean Taiwan. So I think, uh, look, she's no been China. in two minutes, Penny Wong. I've mentioned I, I, Russia, I, not I'm China. I'm not her biggest fan, as you know. Um, I, I, I'm not her biggest fan, as you know, but um, I, I, I think um, the circumstances are, uh, of uh, Beijing's hot breath on Australia's neck uh, will determine what any um, uh, government do, including a new Labor government. So far, they've shown themselves to be Good. Um, minimally uh, patriotic. Um, let's just keep pushing it from there. We mustn't surrender, however, to the Kissinger uh, Rudd school of thought that human rights is not important. Uh, you've just done that Zen's interview. Congratulations. We must say something for the Uyghurs, the Tibetans, the Hong Kongers and the people in Taiwan. No one wants to live under a communist well, boot. Mate, you've been doing this. You've been doing this for many years. And, uh, you know, I take my hat off to you for that, as I did to Kimberly Kitching. Thank you so much for your time, Michael Danby.